Karen Zarnecki, thank you so much for having us here at the Makeda Center today and thank you for being a part of the Between Two Jobs series. Happy to be here. We are so happy to have you. I've been so excited because Alicia Pinstu, we, we love the Makeda Center and we love working with you guys. So really, really thrilled that we can, that we can do this. Um, I just want to kick off with my favorite question straight off, off the bat. Um, can you please describe to me your job? to somebody who doesn't know anything about politics. Oh, absolutely. And I think it's better to show you because this, this okay. will tell you all about it. For those of the uninitiated, this is the Connect Four game. And my job is to be a connector. Of course, many institutions produce policy research, which of course we do here, but it's my job to connect it to audiences, policymakers, who will make informed decisions on policy based upon what we're writing. Fantastic, I love it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the easiest way to describe right. it. That's right, and it's such interesting work, and, and you have the perfect personality for being a connector as well. For those who don't know you, you're always so energetic, and, always, and we love having you speak at LI as well. And I appreciate it too. And I, so kind of talking a bit about Mercatus, because I'm sure there's a lot of people watching who'd be interested in working for Mercatus. You describe yourselves as a university-based research center. What does that mean? Of course, both organizations produce research that they want to get into the hands of policymakers, but a university-based research center essentially is very connected to a university. We are obviously physically located on George Mace University's campus. Um, this is essentially the graduate school campus. The law school is uh, one building away, and the graduate school for um, the master students and the business students and the international affairs students is one building away as well. So we're physically located here. The second reason uh, that we're very close with the university is that a lot of our staff also teach for the university in many capacities. Some are adjunct professors at the law school or for the undergraduate level, but many of them also are tenured professors affiliated with our um, economics department here. And the third way uh, we are very connected to the university, we have an entire division devoted to training the next generation of master's economic students and PhD economists. So we are hoping that a lot of the folks that we are training will be the next generation of university professors or Capitol Hill uh, economists, or they may even go to the business sector. Wonderful. You've spoken at the Leadership Institute at the career trainings many times about outreach and the importance of building coalitions. How can professionals be proactive about building their networks? I think one important thing is really to establish a pattern of lifelong learning. There are many organizations that want you to sign up for their e-newsletters. Um, if you're interested in a topic, sign up for those, read them. I think that's step number one. Step number two, attend events. Again, we are very fortunate to be in the nation's capital with whether it's Cato or the Competitive Enterprise Institute, Heritage, the Brookings Institution, the Urban Institute. There are so many organizations that want people to hear their ideas and learn from them. Attend a couple of events. When I speak at your schools, one of the top things I tell people is, Every month, if you can, during the day, after work, pick one of those organizations and attend an event on an issue you care about or want to learn more about. That is the best way to stay involved, meet new people, and eventually get yourself another job. Looking at the Makeda Center, what do you think has made it so successful? And what do you think are the kind of key factors that make all public policy organizations successful as kind of advancing their agenda? I think the most important thing for any policy organization is really being true to your mission and not changing your positions based upon who is elected president, who the new senator is, who the new committee chairman is. If you have um, intellectual integrity, you are going to write your research, it's going to be backed up by data, and it's not going to be opinion based, it's going to be very fact based, and that's what we like to do here. And again, you're going to stand your ground, you're going to stand uh, on your principles and promote your ideas and better public policy solutions based upon that research. So of course, what you said about consistency is really important because it's the staff who work for Mercatus need to know that the principles they signed up to when they started working here are going to be consistent throughout. And so can you tell me what values you look for in your colleagues and kind of most admire about them? Yes, I think there are four qualities that I admire the most in our research scholars. And the first is their intelligence. Um, they are individuals who don't just have a surface knowledge of the, of the issues, they really have dug deep into the academic literature and they know their issues. They can be asked anything and it's, it's really amazing to watch them in action. For example, we had one of our research scholars um, speaking to a group of legislators a few weeks back. They knew nothing about Mercatus, they knew nothing about how we operate. And he was the first individual to talk to a group of, I would say, center-left 
uh, legislators and they asked him extremely detailed questions and it wasn't just about his 15 minute presentation he was able to talk about the academic literature and refer them to studies and they and it was really amazing to see him in action I thought I admire that the most he knows this issue inside and out he didn't make stuff up uh, he never had to say let me get back to you on that point and it was a really good back and forth with the people that we're trying to have a conversation with we want to get, share these great ideas so that's the first intelligence is one um, integrity, I think, speaks for itself. Um, they are re very honest about the issues. If they find something that uh, doesn't make sense or if somebody challenges them and they don't have a good answer, they're going to go back and look into it more. They want, they want to make sure we're providing the best information possible. Um, flexibility is key for me on the outreach team. Uh, if we schedule a meeting with a governor or a governor's staff or a legislator or a congressman, Let's face it, these individuals are very busy. The schedules change. You're gonna get bumped, things will get moved. And working with these, um, these very important policy makers, you have to understand that, that things are going to change. And if it, it really shouldn't ruffle your feathers or get you upset, um, it's just the day in the life of a research scholar here. And knowing that you can be flexible with that and not get bent out of shape, I think is very, very important. So I appreciate that more than anything else. Fantastic. I think that, that's that's very, very important. I love what you said about integrity as well, which is, is just, for me, just one of the most important things that I could ever imagine somebody having, especially have, at a public policy organization. I have one more, though. My fourth, because I said there were four. Oh, yes, yes, yes. This is the fourth. Humility. Yes. That is a core tenet of anybody who is hired here at Mercatus. And so what does humility mean? We are in Washington, D.C., or the surroundings. And there are a lot of individuals who are very smart, very intelligent, and have... Um, outsized egos yes and we see them all over the place but we've got a lot of individuals here who are very smart but they're extremely approachable as well um, they don't think that they're better than the next research scholar as a matter of fact they work very close with people on the left right and center on their issues because we can always learn from one another and when we are hiring that is one of our cultural values here we look for it in every um, staff member whether you're gonna be a new research scholar whether you're gonna be on the outreach team whether you're gonna be in a communications team because we accept and receive feedback on what have we done, how could we have done it better, and it's not an I'm smarter than you, yeah. it's let's all learn from each other. Yeah, and I think um, this probably doesn't help with the kind of the humble thing, but just to brag a bit about your career for a second, because you've done so many interesting things that I'd love for our viewers to know. You know, you've uh, been a chief of staff on the Hill, uh, you've worked in two administrations, you have a Juris Doctorate, you're a director at at the American Legislative Exchange Council and the Heritage Foundation. I mean, just so many incredible accomplishments. Can you tell me, throughout your career, what has been your biggest motivator? My motivator are the policy issues. I absolutely love finding solutions to policy challenges. Yeah. Um, I really do enjoy reading our papers. I love talking to people about them. I like finding ways to solve problems. So there's always an issue that is going to crop up, whether it's housing affordability, uh, whether it's looking at e-scooters, uh, VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing, whether it's uh, challenges to the banking and financial systems. I find this stuff fascinating. So it's very exciting to work on these issues. I bet. And what do you consider throughout those issues to be your kind of biggest accomplishment in all the, the work that you've done? I don't know if there's one that really stands out in my mind. Uh, if, if you want a, a funny one, uh, probably not getting fired while I worked for the Vice President of the United States uh, and briefing him on Air Force Two. I mean, that was a very proud accomplishment because my colleagues were always joking that I was going to get fired. Oh uh, gosh, I, 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 could, I think I'd turn to mush if I had to brief the Vice President on anything, so I can admire you that. Uh, that, that was a lot of fun, and he, he was a gentleman, and I, I was delivering bad news, and um, instead of getting upset or angry that I had to deliver some difficult news to him, he thanked me, and um, it was, that, that made me feel, as a very young staffer, that, that was a highlight probably of my career, yeah. knowing that I could deliver bad news to a very powerful figure and keep my day job. Um, but honestly, in terms of what am I most proudest, uh, what am I proudest of in all that I've done? I think really taking challenging um, situations and turning them into a positive. For example, in many jobs I've had, I've been asked to take an underperforming unit or a, a a part of an organization that's not really where it needs to be and take it to the next level and being given no instruction just saying figure it out on your own I really take great pride in that because I can be put in any situation 
literally running anything and I will figure it out. And uh, most of my bosses have given me great latitude to figure that out, whether it's sink or swim, as they say. And it's usually worked out fairly well. So I'm very proud of that. Yes, I think those are the real kind of defining career moments, aren't they? Where you have those moments where everything's on you and you just, you sink or swim, as you said. It's very important that you, you survive those moments. So I would love, with your permission, to ask a few kind of fun, get to know you questions, if you like. These are my favorite ones to ask. Okay. So bear with me. I'd love to know, who would play you in Karen Zarnecki, the movie? I think, not one of the, a movie actor, actress, but if, if you've seen any of those uh, videos that have shown up on uh, Facebook, the Holderness family, I think they are hysterical. They'll take something in pop culture and turn it into a, a music video featuring their entire family, and I can really relate to that. I am from Philadelphia, I am from a very large family, and we were always pulling practical jokes on one another. So if anybody's from the New York, New Jersey, um, Pennsylvania area, you might know that we've got a, a pretty distinct sense of humor, and I think they would be marvelous. I think that's a great answer. Mine would be Ryan Reynolds, obviously. Of course. Obviously. <laughs> I, I wish, I wish. <laughs> um, if you could hire one fictional character to work at the Makeda Center, who would it be? Hercule Poirot. I love it. The Belgian detective. I'm a huge fan, huge fan. Played by David Suchet, of course. It's wonderful. Those are wonderful shows. Well, the reason is, a couple of reasons, but number one, he has very excellent powers of observation. And I think in any job, people really need those. You need to know when to speak, when not to speak, how to read a room, knowing when you should interject and when you should not. And if you're working with research scholars, you must have those skills. So I think that is wonderful. But he also had a very clever mind. He could figure out solutions to problems, whereas no one else could. And I like to think that's what we do while we're here. I think that's great. I think we could all do with learning from Hercule Poirot. Yes. Karen Zanecki, thank you so much for having us here today and for speaking to us. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching this video. To watch our latest video, click here. And to make sure you don't miss any future videos, be sure to subscribe.